I have to be honest, right? The fabric thing itself is such a hassle and a hellhole to deal with that I can understand why people just don't give it a chance based on just the first experience of going in there. So number one, you rock up there. And I think in general, the location for me, I think it's great. I feel like it's like legitimately feels like the center of London in a way, which is not really, but in terms of transport links, yeah, taxis and cabs and, and Ubers and stuff, it's probably the best distance you want to get to places you want to get home. So you can basically get, because I've, I've done it before sometimes, I've gotten a bus maybe further up and then taken a cab there and then gone home. Or I've taken, if I'm just completely tired, I'm like, you know, I'll take the hit, I'll just take the cab all the way home. But I was, or I've obviously cycled home as well on that route. So it's pretty easy. So it's a pretty decent place to get to and from. So no hassles in that regard. But the issues start as soon as you rock up to the club. You know, there's a flipping barriers all around it. And the entry system that they have is that you have to go kind of a bit further down past the door, queue up and then you kind of get screened for your ticket, first of all, just to make sure you got a ticket. So you get screened for your ticket. Then when you go through, you get screened for an ID for somebody else. And then they put your, your ID into that machine that we have in most London clubs, that machine that's flipping super Big Brother-esque, right? It feels incredibly like 90. 84 flipping George Orwell stuff where you basically scan your ID card in it and the whole premise behind it is that it's meant to put your details on some sort of database where that database is who knows what they do with it who knows but it essentially it's meant to be like a harm prevention thing where they can share details amongst each other of other clubs in the network I don't know if they have to be local if they have to be regional I'd, who knows and then they're meant to be aware of hey, if this guy's a creep hey, if this guy's violent if this guy's been banned if whatever it may be they can put those things on or maybe put other notes on there wherever it may be but obviously this doesn't happen most of the time because these guys you know they've got a million more people they have to deal with I'm not sure if they're going to be sitting there adding notes into your box about whether or not you harass somebody at the bar whether or not you bump somebody in a queue who knows so you do all that stuff and then you go into another queue where you're basically met by two people on either side no before you do that actually so forget that before you do that you, you give a person to scan the thing and then before you walk in someone scans you with a metal detector handheld one and proper up everywhere obviously if you look like me you get scanned some more because they never know if you're on flipping you know chup 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 time so you get scanned super hard and then then you go in and then you have like two rows of people with buckets next to them and then they tell you to open all your pockets and maybe even that if you're if you're unlucky like i was you get scanned again at that station so the station where you basically put all your positions in a bucket and then you spread yourself out like that and have the person you know search everywhere and when i say search everywhere i mean search everywhere you know you're um, under your armpits like i even had the feeling that the person was searching you know the belt loop bit or whatever that that position is called next to the belt that was being searched the inside of my finger was being searched the, then they used the back of their hand and searched on the inside side between my legs where usually most people would stash their gear right all that kind of area it gets so sure trust me if you go to fabric just behave be your best behavior don't muck around because if they find anything on you i'm not sure what they might do to you they might put you in a flipping dash choke or something but you get searched extensively and then you get an, and then i got another scan again and luckily again me now i'm going to clubs a lot and I've, I've been doing this for a while and it's not something that i go to just for the sense of escapism meant to go in you know get high go crazy because of that i don't necessarily go drunk and high anymore i generally maybe be going with a bit of a buzz maybe at most a bit of a flipping buzz from a magnum or something but for the most part i'm going there stone cold sober and ready to go get lit inside so luckily it doesn't affect me these things but i'd imagine if i was high off whatever and I was getting scanned and searched and groped and touched to this extent. It's the ultimate vibe killer. Ultimate vibe killer. Which is why I understand why people don't even give that place a chance. Even though the lineup is so sick. Every weekend, bar none, are always incredible. And nowadays even more so because they've, I felt like, opened their doors up to like more alternative quote unquote club nights. Some of the guys and girls involved in the LGBTQ and queer scene. Some of the sex positive parties, some take place in there. So they're clearly trying to open up their horizons. Try to welcome in different people. And the fact of the matter is if... Once you go there once and you hear the sound system, you see how nice the club is in terms of to get around and how it's laid out and stuff. It's hard not to go back there again. Like I've, I've been there many, many times over the years. Even though I have my reservations about it, I still go back because it's still legitimately on the eye and to the ear, one of the best nightclubs in the world. But it's just still the hassle before you get in there. Then you have to walk up some stairs to then go to the ticket office, right? And then the ticket office you go up. Another thing that I really hate, which is a, it's a pet peeve, but I know there's probably good reason for it, but it's the, over, it's the overbearing nature of the 
the people who try to usher you along maybe there are ushers in terms of like stand on that side it's your next you're next. it's like we know we're in the queue we can see it, especially in fabric they've got these little they've got these little uh, ticket offices things with these perspect glasses where the ticket attendants sit in a position so they either scan your ticket or you pay for a ticket but we can see we know we're standing in a queue we see them right in front of us but there's always somebody shouting come on move in front go um subway and you're next it's just i hate that stuff it just grinds my gears and like i said imagine if i was high or drunk i'd be super tense right so you do that you get a ticket scan and then when you're finished there you want to put your coat in a flipping coat room like i did because i had a big massive parka that i was wearing right you want to put that thing in there guess what you have to queue up again and then go to put your coat in the cloak room so i didn't want to wait and obviously i was with somebody else as well who didn't want to wait and i thought you know what let's just go in go inside but i've got this big jacket in my hand so now i decided to so now i'm in a position where i have to be resourceful and find out how i'm going to maneuver this nightclub where it's incredibly hot it's in a basement the air conditioning is essentially non-existent raving and dancing the way that i do which is excessive and really aggressive right i kind of get with it right? i'm cramping in that dance floor i'm going for it. i'm being aggressive i'm treating it like i'm in some sort of hardcore show you know i mean swinging arms and elbows so now i have been in a position where i'm having to start into beg for in these flipping security guards of the green room to let them let me in so i can dash my coat in the back which they were graceful enough to do they shouldn't have probably done it and i probably wasn't wrong for even asking and they're probably i hope they don't get in trouble for letting me in there but i ended up having to dash my coat in the green room so i could have an opportunity to just enjoy myself because i didn't want to go there pay all that money that i paid to go for a ticket just to go and hold my jacket the whole time because the queue was too long and they want to keep going up and down and checking either so that's annoying then it starts the actual event starts and it was heavenly and also big up to fabric too credit to them because they never usually do this. i don't know why they did this this time but for some reason they decided to put the flipping lineup on social and they never do this before so they never have the set list of who's playing maybe because it was a continuum event but either way i super appreciate it and the fact that we had the lineup beforehand alleviate my fears before going there in terms of who i wanted to see because i was going to miss anybody that was flipping brilliant